Hello and good morning. Welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater. I am the gallery coordinator and preparator at Art Starts in schools. And I am excited to be making along with you for the third week in a row um, as we explore maps together. If you haven't seen our previous weeks exploring maps and you want to go back and check it out, you can visit us online on, on our website at artstarts.com slash explores dash online um, or check out our video archive on Facebook or on YouTube. And so you can always go back and check out any of our previous episodes and, and watch them for the first time or watch them again. Okay, so in the previous weeks, we've been exploring um, maps in like a 2D sense as it, um, as it relates to the, the land or to wayfinding or to traveling um, over terrain. And um, e even mapping our own spaces. So whether that's um, where we live or where we go to school or where we play, um, using the map to connect to um, the, the ground, to the land, to, to buildings, to um, how we travel. This week, I thought we would look at the body that travels the land um, and how we could map our own bodies um, and things that we could do once we have mapped our body. And so this week, we're going to be looking at mapping um, our own body. So before we get started, here are some of the tools that I'm going to assemble um, to work with. If you have some paper, if you want to make along with me, um, I always like to make sure that you know that you don't have to make along with me. You can just watch. And then if you are inspired or you come up with an idea while you're watching, you could pause or stop the video and go try things out for yourself. You don't have to make along at the same time as me. Um, watching or reading the captions is, is a great way to explore art making. But if you do want to get hands-on and you want to make at the same time as me, I recommend that you find some paper. And as uh, I always like to do for all of our explorers, this does not have to be nice new paper. Um, paper from the recycling bin is just great. It doesn't have to be a specific size. Um, I got, uh, somebody gave me an old sketchbook and it already had some um, pictures on it. And so um, I just ripped out the paper that was still, um, that, that still had some room for me to be able to draw on. And now I've got, I've got some great paper that I can be, I can be using and it doesn't have to be clean and ready to go because nothing we're making today is for keeps. Some mark making tools. And that can be a pencil, a pen, crayons, pencil crayons, lipstick, anything that you have permission to use. Um, at Art Starts Explores, I always like to use a marker because there's a really good contrast so you can see what I'm doing. But just because I always use a marker doesn't mean you have to use a marker. And then I've got this dotted line down here to basically mean um, you don't have to get these things, but I might be trying um, to work with these. And so I'm going to start from the bottom up. The tape and the string is just so that when we're, um, when we're exploring our bodies, if we wanted to have separate pieces and be able to move them around, if you wanted to tie them off or if you wanted to tape them down, you can do that. I don't think I'm going to grab any tape this week, but you might appreciate it. Scissors, same thing. I have some scissors handy, but in general, I'm not going to use them because if I can have an excuse to rip paper, I'm going to rip some paper. Um, this week I even have ripped paper ready to go. So, um, but if you are using string or tape, having a set of scissors might also be a good idea. Um, and then finally, dice. So depending on what you have available, um, you might have a couple of different sizes. You might have dice that have um, pips or dots on them. Um, or ones that have numbers on them, um, you can use those as we, um, we consider how we can play with some of the, uh, the mapping that we do today. If you don't have uh, dice, I will show you an alternative way to make um, uh, a chance device um, without having to have a ready-made um, die ready to go. But if you have some available, why not grab them and we'll see if we can incorporate them in our making today. 
Okay, so I'm going to move some of these things off to the side so we have a bit more space. You know who I am. It's my voice you're hearing or reading in the captions. And then I'll move these over to the side a little bit as well. Okay, so let's explore uh, maps. So what I had said was we were going to map our bodies. And so remember that when we are art making, when we're, when we're, especially when we're practicing or we're trying new things, that whatever we draw here doesn't have to be perfect. This is just um, a practice. This is just us trying things out. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect example of your body. Um, so you don't have to worry about being good at drawing um, or good at drawing bodies. That, that's not important at all. In fact, if you're worried at all about that, I recommend that you stick with a representation that is really very simple. If you have a head, you can draw a circle. You can draw your head however you want, but if you're not sure, a circle is just fine. If you have um, a neck and a stomach, a torso, then draw a line. If your torso is really short, you can draw it really short. If you have a really long body, then you can draw it really long. Either way is fine. If you have one arm, you can draw an arm. If, you're, if your arm ends at your elbow, you can leave it there. If your arm continues from your elbow, you could draw it like that. If you have a hand, you could draw it like that, then making up the palm. I'm just giving you suggestions. However you draw um, each part of your body, it's completely up to you. If you have your fingers and you want to include that, you could just leave the circle right there because you know it goes like that. But if you want to have your fingers, you could go one, two, three, you only have three fingers that's fine if you only have one finger but if you have the same as me I have one two three four five then I can do five there or you can do five there this is also for fun and just for um, art play so if you want to pretend like you have six fingers or ten fingers there's no reason why you couldn't do that same thing if you only have the one arm that's cool if you have two arms that go to an elbow, great. That goes to your wrist, great. If you have a palm, that's great. And if you have any number of fingers, that's great too. So I don't look like this in real life. <laughs> and however you, how much you've drawn so far, you probably don't look like that in real life either. But what I'm talking about when I say representation is that if you have certain parts that you can um, kind of code or map to your body, so this line is mapped to my torso or my stomach and neck. Even I could do two. I could do two here. And so maybe that dot now is my shoulders. Or I could even draw, there you go. So there are my shoulders without having to make it different than a... A stick person but if those are my shoulders then that line can become my neck and that line can become my torso my neck doesn't look like that my shoulders doesn't look like that but I can make the decision to map that dot to my right shoulder and this circle with these sticks coming out of it to my right hand and my five fingers and that's my decision I get to make that choice and you get to make that choice too in however you are drawing your body so same thing, if I can, I'll draw a, a dot for my hips um, and my bum and where my legs come out. So there's, there's there, maybe you will put my belly button here just for fun. You can add whatever details you want. And then um, if you, from your hips, if you've got um, a leg joint that goes to your knee, that's great. If you have one on the other side to your left side, if you have a knee on this side, and no knee on that side, you don't have to draw it. I'm gonna bring it over to the side so that they can kind of be the same size. Um, if I'd drawn my paper like that, it might have had a bit more room, but that's okay if my legs are shorter because this is just for fun, right? This is just trying it out. 
Also, if I wanted to cut it out later, I could keep going and I could draw my knee here and draw the bottom of my leg there. And I will do that. I do have two legs. And so I'm going to draw my knee here. And then I'm going to use this space over here to go a bit longer. So if I was kicking my leg up, I have an ankle. I have a foot. And I happen to have one, two, three, four, five toes on that foot. I kind of went off the page here. And so I'm going to use this over here. This is my knee. This is my left leg. There's my ankle. There's my foot. And one, two, three, four, five. And so that's me. So these are all the parts of the body that I have. You might have more or you may have fewer. And that's fine. So you don't have to have the same uh, number of pieces on your body as me. Oh, I want to put an elbow. I want to make that articulated down. So that's really fine. Okay. So now what we're going to do, now that we've mapped our body by putting, um, by putting different objects on the page, different symbols on the page that match up with our body, let's isolate it. Let's cut it out or rip it out. I'm going to rip it, as I said, because I really like ripping paper. But you can go ahead and you can cut yours if you would prefer. Okay, remember I didn't want this, this part of my knee? this part of my leg because I drew it somewhere else so I'm gonna just rip it right off there we go and then I'm gonna take my leg over here and I like to rip paper really fast because I rip paper all the time and I have lots of practice but if you need to rip the paper slower that's okay too and as I said if you don't like ripping paper and you want to use your scissors that's just fine so there you go I could bring my paper a little closer so the joint looks like it's actually connected. There we go. All right, right? So it didn't matter that my page didn't fit. I could have done this um, in a couple of different places. Now I've got all this cool ripped paper that I'm ready to go. If I wanted to have one hand that was wearing a glove or one hand um, that only had four fingers, for, what, for whatever reason, if you wanted to just make that figure have something different, you could just put it like that. Or maybe you miscounted. Maybe you did five, or sorry, did six fingers and you only meant to do five, or you did five fingers and you meant to only do two. You could totally just keep um, drawing another version of it and then place it on top. I want, now that I've done this cool thing where this part of my body that I mapped, my knee to my leg, can move around. You see how I'm touching this and I can move this? kind of want to be able to do this with this foot too. So I'm going to rip it off. There we go. I'm going to rip some of the extra paper because there's a lot of paper on this one. And depending on the kind of paper that you grab from the recycling bin or that you're working with today, um, it might be easier or harder to rip. And that's another reason why you might want to use scissors. There we go. And you know what? I think, I think I'm going to draw this on the other side as well. There's my ankle. There's my foot. There are my five toes. And check it out. So now I'll do the same thing on this side. And if I ever want to have my foot facing in the other direction. And I can do that, right? Just need to flip it over. And so if you're using um, markers and like a lighter piece of paper, flip it over and see if you can actually see the mark. You might not need to draw it again, um, but you could draw, you could also draw an alternative on the other side, right? So uh, if you wanted to, maybe, maybe you have the ability to be up on your toes um, and so maybe you want to draw your feet in another uh, orientation. Actually, that gave me a thought. I'm going to rip off my foot now. 
not my foot. I'm going to rip off my representation of my foot, right? Because remember, we're mapping. This is just a map. This is a representation of our body. It isn't actually our body. And there you go. So now I can be up on my toes. There we go. And I mean, I already did it to my, to my ankles and to my knees. Why don't I keep going? Where are the other places where I've mapped out that I want to be able to um, move? And depending on the amount of information that you, that you drew or that you included in your body map, you might be able to rip up a lot of different parts or cut up a, a lot of different parts of your body to, uh, to be able to move or manipulate your drawing um, and map how your body can move. And so I have the ability to, uh, to walk, to use both of my legs to get around. Um, if I was using, if I was using crutches or if I was using um, a wheelchair, that might be part of my mapping. Maybe it's not a part of my body, but it, um, I might consider it to be an extension um, of my body, or at least important when I move. So having it mapped as well uh, would be would be really important. And so um, I might draw a wheelchair or crutches um, or braces, right? Um, if you have braces, and it means that um, and so not the braces for your teeth, but braces for um, your, your legs or your arms. Um, it might mean that you decided to draw your bracers and you didn't decide to draw an elbow. You might still have an elbow, right? It's, and it's okay. You don't have to draw all these different parts, even if you've got them. Um, but if you wanted to not draw your elbow because the brace that you have keeps your arm straight, then maybe you'll just draw one long line. And that's okay, because you're mapping your body. I'm just showing you the map of my body. But yours is going to look different because you have a different body. Okay, so I can now move this joint at the elbow. Cool. And I'm going to do one more here because I did it over there. Actually, I'm going to do two more. I'm going to take my head right off my shoulders. Or at least I'm going to take the representation of my head right off my shoulders. Maybe you drew your hair and you want to uh, rip or cut your hair off separately because your hair might move. Maybe you know you can move your ears and it was really important for you to draw your ear or ears. And then one more over here so that I can move my shoulder. Ooh. And if you start ripping or cutting and you accidentally rip or cut a part that you don't want to, that's okay. You could start again or you could, as I said before, right, you could just draw a new part, right? So as you're starting to cut these things up, if you're like, oh, you know what? The, and you know what? I'm going to do this because looking at this, I think that my shoulder to my elbow should actually be longer. It, I should have a longer section here. So I'm going to take one of my ripped pieces of paper and I'm going to use the section of my, um, from my elbow to my wrist. And I'm going to use that length to, um, to inform me, to make me realize that this is probably how long at the minimum I want this part to be from my elbow to my shoulder. And so I'm going to draw a dot there. I'm going to draw a line basically to my hand and there we go. And so now I've decided that this is going to replace this one. I'm going to put it there. And there we go. Yep. I feel like that's a better map. And now that I've got this one, and my arms, uh, my arms are pretty equal in length. So for me, I'm just going to, I'm going to draw that again. So that's basically the same size. It doesn't have to be perfect. There we go. And then I'm going to take this side. Oh, whoops, <laughs> I threw away that one. And I meant to throw away that one. There we go. Okay. So for me, I feel like this is more the movement that I could do 
or is, is a is a map, is a representation of my body. Oh, you know what? Maybe at one point I'll also rip off um, this part because I can move my hips and I can move my legs. So you keep looking, you keep thinking about your body as you're mapping. You might notice some things that you can move or that you can't move. Um, and then you'll want to adjust or rip or add pieces based on what you what you notice. And if you're not sure, you could stand in front of a mirror. And when you're starting to look at the part of maybe your right shoulder and what happens from your right shoulder down your arm and however far your arm goes, you can look in the mirror and go, when I move my shoulder, how high up or how far up can I move my shoulder to my elbow? And if you have um, a leg that goes from your hip all the way down to your toes, you can look in the mirror and go, how many parts of my legs right down to my toes can I move around? And if you only have um, a leg to a knee or even higher up, you can check to see how much movement you have between your hip and um, whatever part of your leg that you have that you move, and then only draw and map that part of your body, right? Because all bodies are awesome. All bodies are different and unique and interesting. And however you map it is going to be right for you. Okay, so now we have one kind of body map. And really what we're doing for this map is that we are mapping movement. We're mapping all the ways that our body could move. And that's why we ripped it out and we kind of, we, we isolated or we, we, um, we just have parts that are able to move so that we could reposition our body map. So to start with, what we could do is, is that if we have one of these, we could try and mimic or use our map to dictate what we should do in real life. And if you think about like a road map, um, when you're in the car, or even when you're walking or biking, if you look at the map, it gives you um, an approximation. It gives you an idea. It gives you one way or even multiple ways to get from one point to another. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right way. It also doesn't necessarily mean that it's always correct because things happen and that map was printed once. And so even though we've got this map, this representation of our body, just because today we can move like the map that we made doesn't mean that tomorrow we can necessarily move like this. And so we could do this exercise all over again and map our body based on how we can move at that time. But right now, let's position our, our map, our body map, in such a way that we feel like we could imitate it, that we could do the same thing. I feel like I could do this one. Maybe I'll, I'll tilt my head a little to the side. There, I could move my head to the side. Yep. Great. I'm going to do it again. How about like this? On my hips, and then maybe I will, oh, I'm gonna flip my, flip my leg around because now I'm going to kick my leg up like this. Maybe a little bit higher, maybe to a midpoint. I'm gonna see if I can do this. Maybe the thing that I, I try and map here is not something that I actually can do. And then I think I'm gonna go up on one of the balls of my feet. I'm going to move this so that my knee is over top of each other, so I don't have two knees. There we go. All right. Oh, and this time I think I'm going to keep my head straight. Cool. Were you able to do what you did for your map? Did you try and position yourself um, in a really, really difficult way? and see if you could do it? Did you find some ways that it was really easy for you thought it was gonna be really easy for you to position um, your body? And then when you actually tried to do it, it was really very hard. And that's okay, right? We're just trying things out. We're just learning, seeing what works and what doesn't work. So that's one thing. We could use that as an exercise, just to check in with our bodies, to see how it works, to explore. 
This can also help us when we're learning how to draw figures and bodies. And it's something called anatomy, where we figure out where things are connected so that when we're drawing them, remember how I had to change the length from my elbow to, sorry, from my shoulder to my elbow. I changed that because I know on my body that this from the, um, from my wrist to my elbow is a similar size, is, is almost the same size as from my elbow to my shoulder. And so I needed to make sure that those lines were fairly similar. And those are things that you start to notice when you start to learn to draw, especially if you slow down and you look at how your body is in the mirror. And drawing yourself is different again from drawing another body. And that's why when we draw other people, we need to slow down and really look um, before we just start drawing or we'll make assumptions based on bodies that we know versus the bodies that we see. Okay, so now we have this really cool body map. I want us to do um, something with the dice. And what I thought we could do is we could play a game where what we do is we assign some numbers now to different parts of our body. And so remember before I said, if you don't have the die, I would tell you um, a, a way of doing a chance game. And so, or sorry, a chance device. And so the easiest thing is that if you've got all this scrap paper lying around, you can pick, and I only, I'm limited to the number of numbers on my die. So I have, ooh, excuse me, um, six, six total numbers on my six sided die here. But if you have a piece of paper, you could go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, as many numbers as you fit in there. And so uh, you could take an object that that you have lying around and you could throw it at the piece of paper until, oh, there, it landed on a one, landed on the 11, oh, landed on the eight. And so you could play with it like this, with a, with a coin or a toy um, or any kind of like even just a piece of plastic that you grab from the recycling bin. Um, or you could rip the numbers up. Remember, any excuse for me to rip a piece of paper is always fun and good. Okay, and you could do a couple things where you could shake it up in your hands, close your eyes, and then whatever number you pull out, there you go, one. <laughs> That's the number that you use. Um, you could also, if you're gonna control it, is you could drop them, and then whatever number you see first, maybe you saw eight, maybe you saw nine first, that's the number you choose. Maybe it could be the number that falls on top of the pile. Okay, so I got three numbers here, but this one is the same level as the rest. This one's, uh, my six is kind of covered by other pieces of paper, but my 10 is on top of all three of them, so the 10 is what I'd choose. So you can create your own die, your own chance device, and you can add as many numbers or as few numbers as you want. I'm going to put my chance device over there, and I'm going to just keep using my, my die, and I'm going to stick with six for now. Um, but by using a six-sided die, I'm limited to six total numbers that I can assign to my body map right now. And so that's okay. But, I mean, that means I've only got six, and I've got lots of different cool parts of my body that I could be um, that I could be assigning numbers to, and so uh, I'm going to just find of the the pieces that I already ripped up. There's my five. There's my three. There's my one, four, two. There they are. Okay, I'm going to push the other ones aside, and now I'm just going to randomly assign some numbers to different parts of my body. Five. Uh, maybe my knee. Mm. In my left elbow, and then my oh, and then my right shoulder. Okay, so I put I put the die here. So there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that I could do here. The first one could be that. Um, if I was doing this with uh, another person, a, a grown up, a friend, a sibling, um, and they made a body map of themselves, what you could do 
is uh, once you've got all the numbers, you could go, okay, I want you to move your six. I want you to move your right hand. And you could play a statue game. Or you could come up with any game. This is just one game that I'm coming up with. But what, however you map your body, you could come up with a game of, of how to do movement. You could put some music on and you could build a dance where when you, so you're dancing and you have to hold that dance until you roll and then you call out right shoulder. And so now all they have to do is they have to um, modify the dance so that their right shoulder is now moving in a different way. Or maybe it's that your right shoulder can't move and you move everything else. And then you keep moving it until all of the different pieces are either moving or not moving. If you had somebody who was um, being a model for you, so there's somebody who is um, standing for you so that you can draw them, you could do the same thing where you go, okay, I want you to move your two. And that that's the part that they, they're going to move. Or... Instead, you could do it for yourself and you could go and you don't even have to move your model. You could just focus on that part and just draw there too. And so you don't have to draw the whole body. You could just focus and draw the person who you're drawing and just draw their elbow. I'm not sure what part to draw. Well, now I'm going to draw their right foot. And so now they have to move so that you can see their right foot. And now they have to move so that you can see their head. And so you can practice drawing the different parts of them um, as long as you know you have permission and you talk to each other because um, communication and consent is important especially when we're drawing or taking pictures of people but if we're drawing with somebody who we have permission to do then that's another way that we could add the chance element in so dancing modeling drawing somebody uh, doing stretches doing exercises looking, deep looking at one part of your body, um, seeing how they, they move, doing a different body map, depending on um, how much movement you have on one day compared to another, acknowledging that this map is just a map of this moment in time and not all moments in time, and also that this map is just a representation. It's a simplification. It's a simple way of uh, looking at your body um, and representing your body, but that it, it is in no way an actual map of who you are and who your body or what your body really is. So just like a roadmap, it's just a simplification. It doesn't have all the pieces. It doesn't show everybody's house on the map. It doesn't show the history of the land. It really only shows the parts that um, the person who or the company that printed the map had permission to go or didn't have permission, but went anyways and took and are publishing it. So just like when we do these maps, this is a representation of our bodies. We wouldn't be able to do this for somebody else and it be very accurate or it be very right because we don't know another body the way that we know our bodies. And so this is a good activity to do for our own bodies. But if we were going to do this with somebody else, maybe we'd ask them to do their own. Or we'd do something very generic. And generic is just um, that it doesn't actually represent anyone. Because really, when we look at this, these are just lines. This isn't actually even a body. These are just lines and dots and circles and numbers and dashes Oh, I'm going to finally get my leg. There we go. Right? So just look at it now. By orienting it before, it was a body. But now, they're just lines. They're just marks that we made. Right? They don't have to represent anybody. We could, re we could remove these around now. We could make it into something else. There's two eyes. <laughs> there we go. This is, oh, actually, I think it would be funnier with a surprise face. Okay, there's a uh, surprise mouth. Maybe they've got really big antennas, right? These are just marks. These, this is just paper. This isn't actually any one person. And it can be funny, and it can be temporary, um, but it's just a representation. It, it's not real. Um, 
experience and it can be changed at any time. So the more simple you make it, the more you could you can borrow meaning for a second and go, okay, yep, right now I'm going to I'm going to get permission from somebody and say, hey, can we do a body map? And go, hey, do you have a head? Well, let's use this circle to represent your head. It doesn't mean that they they have a really round circle for their head. It doesn't mean that they have white skin. Changing the color of the paper, if you were to do this on blue or pink paper, doesn't mean that the person that you are working with necessarily has that color of skin. This is just a representation, right? This is just a circle and a line that we get to say, that we get to map to somebody's head and say, this right now represents your head. And this line right here, it represents for right now, it's your it's your torso. And you know what? I think I was wrong. I think I would prefer this to be your torso and your shoulders. Yep. And I can just change it up because it's not for real. It's not permanent. It's just it's just to try something out um, for for this activity. It also allows you to change up the body and go. For me, I had all these these ready mates ready to go. Uh, but for you, this might be a better representation of your body. That's just fine. Actually, maybe like this. And if that's someone's body, that's just fine. And if that represents the movement that they can do today, that's okay. When you're all done trying and playing, assigning numbers, drawing, making up your own dance, just remember that this map and any map are just a bunch of lines and marks on a page. Thank you so much for making and playing along with me this week. Uh, I had a really great time exploring maps. Um, so this was week three of exploring maps. If you missed any of the previous weeks, um, all of those videos, and including this video, if you were only able to get through part of this video or you want to show it to um, another friend, classmate, um, a sibling, a uh, grown up, you can do that by visiting our website at artstarts.com slash explorers dash online or visiting us on Facebook or YouTube. Thanks so much for joining me. And I look forward to making along with you again next month. I'm going to leave my camera running uh, for a little bit, like I always like to do, because we want to practice respect and clean up my space. I hope you do the same thing too.